I'm Hugh Evans uh, from Sheffield Organic Growers. Uh, we'll have a look around the farm and have a look at the new uh, solar installation that's just complete today. Uh, we've got 20 acres here. Uh, we've got a three acre orchard, which we'll have a look at now, uh, which is mostly growing apples and pears and plums, a bit of soft fruit. And that's where the new barn and the solar installation is. And then through there, we've got a nine acre field growing vegetables, salads, herbs, and we've got a new eight acre field, which we are just uh, starting to grow vegetables on this year. And we planted a lot of new woodland there and also some uh, flowers for commercial production. So we've been here for 10 or 11 years um, and been, well, just had no, no mains power at all. We've been struggling with a whole series of, you know, tiny solar systems. Uh, and obviously the other thing is we really needed cold storage to, to put the crops in. As soon as you've harvested them, they need to be chilled down. Uh, so with the, with the new system we've got here, we've got plenty of power to run a cold storage, proper cold storage room and a couple of uh, electric delivery vehicles charging everything else up and uh, and also other bits and pieces like heat mats for helping germination of crops there's all sorts of uh of all sorts of things that we can now do that either we couldn't do at all before or we had to sort of do our own houses away from the work site so yeah it's a really big sort of step up big step change for us yeah the other thing we're off grid for uh, for water as well so we've got our own borehole uh and you know, we've had to uh, run a generator to pump most of our water out of the ground. We've got a little solar system, but that struggles a bit to, to keep up with what we need. So obviously now we've got the, you know, we've got the battery storage as well as the, the power from here. We could, uh, we could just run a cable, run an armoured cable across the site to the borehole and uh, get as much water as we need. So I think we've got 54, uh, 54 panels. Uh, we've got half on an east facing slope and half on a west facing slope. We don't have any south facing ones at all, um, but I suppose it means we'll get power over a, long, a longer period of the day from early morning to later in the afternoon, evening. Uh, so it's about 22 kilowatts, I think, of uh, panels. Okay, so here's the system inside the barn. Uh, inverter, charge controllers, a good massive battery bank. Uh, it's really neatly installed, uh, really nicely laid out. Uh, some, some of the cables are hidden behind the, uh, the board as well. Uh, it seems really clear to understand, especially the, uh, yeah, the, the colour controller, colour display. That's really, that's really fantastic to use, really clear to understand what's going on. Yeah, so just looking forward to, uh, to, to, to using this system for all the things that we, uh, we want to be able to do, that we haven't been able to do until today. So yeah, exciting to have all this here. And uh, yeah, it's been a, been a good installation, taken about a week, I think, to do this. But um, yeah, no hitches, no problems, uh, just gone smoothly. Hi, Lee Naylor, off grid installer um, in Sheffield or North Derbyshire, actually, still in North Derbyshire at the moment. Um, you've already met Yuma customer, really enjoyed the job. What a beautiful location, been absolutely fantastic. We've put, as you can see, quite a lot of solar panels using uh, short rail clamps. Um, all the panels are in strings of nine. Uh, the cables go off on that side of the building, down and into the DC isolators and to the solar controllers. You'll see that shortly. Um, quite an interesting array. You've got an east and west split. Uh, so for off grid, like I've said before, having all your panels south facing, and your batteries get fully charged in the day. You actually lose um, the chance to generate more electric, basically, because you've got no way of capturing it. So by having uh, a, some of your panels on the east catches the morning sunshine and then again in the afternoon uh, the west panels catch the afternoon sunshine but the east is still generating all day long um, yeah great project really enjoyed it great customer love you love his products um, got to try his apple juice his apple juice is absolutely stunning um, and check him out uh, Sheffield Organic Growers and we'll see you inside so it's early May so we've got the apple blossom on the trees now some of the trees are right out and they've got the bees in them. Some of the other trees, the blossom hasn't quite come out. This is a pear tree where the blossom was on a couple of weeks ago. See some of the young fruitlets starting now, starting to swell. Got about 30 different varieties of apple here. So we're picking apples from the end of August to the first week in November, generally. We've got a few unusual things like damsons and quince. Uh, got some crab apples. 
but actually the main productive crop is the apples and the pears and the plums. Okay, so one of our biggest challenges here is uh, we have a, a high population of badgers and they love to scramble up into the trees and to grab plums and apples and pears. So we have an electric fence here, put down at the moment for us to walk over, but normally uh, the fence runs all the time when there's nobody on site. We've been running it off a, a battery in a tiny little solar panel. We've been taking the battery away to recharge it. Um, but obviously now we can run it off the new uh, solar system. This keeps the badges out, uh, possibly keeps other things out as well, but it certainly uh, does its job when we're not here. So we're organically certified fruit growers, uh, which means that we try to choose trees which are more naturally disease resistant, um, but we also have to do other things to reduce the disease pressure like putting these little black bands uh, on the on the trunks of the trees all through the winter to stop the uh, the winter moth climbing up. Uh, we also prune them really quite openly, let the air through. We have to try and chop up all the fallen leaves so that the, the scab fungus doesn't come back in the springtime. So all of these things we do, which take a lot of time and effort, but it means we can get good quality fruit without having to use, well, we're not allowed to use, uh, any uh, any synthetic or chemical sprays. So that's uh, it's quite a lot of work to grow organic fruit, but you know you know that it's healthy. It's healthy for us and it's healthy for people eating the fruit, um, and it's looking after the soil and the environment. So on this side, yeah, we've got black currants. Uh, I think I might have planted too many black currants. We've got so many black currant bushes, we struggle to pick them all. Um, but there's actually six different varieties, so we can pick black currants over a six-week period. Okay, we've got a couple of beehives here. You can just see underneath the, uh, the crabapple tree here. And this is the, the time of the year for us when the bees are obviously the most important uh, because these bees are out and about in all of these uh, apple trees, pollinating them and obviously uh, collecting the nectar. Um, I won't go closer than this because they're very busy just now. But standing next to any of these trees, if you stand still, you can just hear the buzzing. Uh, really busy today. So we've got a couple of ponds on the farm which were built by the local wildlife trust uh, specifically for uh, great crested newts. We actually don't have newts yet but there's a population a mile away in one direction and a mile in the other and they think it's important that the two populations should have somewhere to meet in the middle. So the pond is here it's more than a meter deep and then at the top end what looks like a mound of soil, it's actually got branches in the middle of that. It's a hibernaculum. And when the newts emerge from the water, they always go uphill and uh, they can crawl into that, into the middle of that pile to find somewhere safe to hibernate. So this is one of the organic vegetable growing areas. Uh, we're not allowed to use uh, synthetic fertilizers, obviously. We do use some composts and a very small amount of manure, but our main fertility building technique is what you can see here. There's strips of clover and there's strips of vetch and rye. And um, uh, here there's crops grown in alternate strips. So last year there was courgettes grown here. And when they were harvested, uh, as soon as they were up, we put the vetch and the, the rye down. The vetch has roots, uh, nodules on the roots that fix nitrogen from the air. And the rye and sometimes grass holds onto that nitrogen and the other nutrients through the winter. So when we chop this up and turn it in, uh, those nutrients are re-released to the next crop in the soil. Okay, uh, so we are off grid for water as well. Uh, there's no mains water available around here. So we drilled a borehole here. This is the, the top of a 60 meter borehole and the geology is coal measures. So there's, uh, there's plenty of water down there. We're pumping it using, at the moment, two small solar panels, but it doesn't really pump enough. So sometimes we have to run a generator uh, so uh, we now have the option of running a long armoured cable from our new solar facility to, uh, to pump plenty of water up. So this is our new field. Uh, we've had this field for only a year now and it was in intensive arable production before. Uh, so we've put it into organic conversion 
but we need to do some work to improve the quality of the soil. And we're doing that by mostly by planting this mix of clovers and grasses and herbs. And this seed mix went in a year ago and we cut it three times each season, cut it and leave the cuttings on the field. And as they break down, they're, uh, they're improving the quality of the soil. And the clover obviously is fixing nitrogen. The trees you can see behind me, well, this field, it had some good soil, which is where we're gonna grow vegetables in the future, but it has some poor soil. And on the areas of poor soil, we've planted uh, new trees you can see behind me. That's gonna be an area of woodland that'll be coppiced. And the more, uh, the, the, the trees that are closer together, that's a, a windbreak hedge that we just planted about a month ago. Um, so as the, these trees came uh, to us from the Woodland Trust, but we planted them ourselves. As they grow up, they'll actually create shelter. So it'll improve the growing conditions on the better land where we're growing vegetables. So it's good to grow the trees for themselves for you know, sequestering carbon and improving biodiversity, but they are also improving our business and uh, improving conditions for, for the vegetables. So they've got a lot of uh, good things about them. Okay, this is uh, one of the packing sheds. So these are veg bags that have been packed this week, uh, packed and labeled, ready to go out to customers. So they uh, get delivered on Thursdays and Fridays, direct to people's houses. So as much as possible of the produce is grown here and anything we can't grow here this time of year comes from other growers as close as possible. The other thing we do here as well as uh, grow fruit and vegetables and salads commercially is we have a group of people that come here three days a week who have autism and learning difficulties. They work uh, with Vicky, my wife, uh, in this polytunnel, small polytunnel and a small garden area. And they're basically growing and taking home a lot of the produce that they've, they've grown themselves. So they come here right through the year, uh, involved in everything from sowing the seed and things like this, these, uh, these trays, through to um, looking after, watering the plants, and at the end, harvesting the produce and uh, taking it home. So yeah, they get to take some produce home uh, every single day that they come here, even, even in the middle of winter, even in January and February. Okay, so this is a very large pile of compost, and uh, this is compost we buy in in lorry loads, uh, also to uh, improve the soil, help the plants grow. But it's made, it's called green waste compost, and it's actually made from uh, the leaves, and branches, twigs, everything collected from households, shredded up and composted properly at a high temperature, so all the weed seeds are killed off, and um, and then it's sieved, and it's delivered to us in these uh, lorry loads. And it's, it's easy to use. It's not very high in nutrients, but uh, it's a good soil improvement. Here we are looking at the system, um, start from left to right. We've got a 15 kilowatt um, inverter, which should give you maximum 15 kVA output. Um, we've got 12 lithium ion phosphate batteries in here. Each battery holds a maximum of 3.55 kilowatt hours. So. If you add it all up, it comes to 42 point something kilowatt hours. Uh, we've got two solar controllers. This will output 14.4 kilowatts. You've got um, four, four separate strings of panels at the bottom, so four strings of nine there. On the RS100 controller, you've got two strings of nine. So when you add all the strings up six times nine, you've got 54 panels. Each of these isolators isolates um, two strings at a time. So you've got S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6. Um, this is the servo, like you've seen on the videos, the brain of the unit. So that communicates with all the other boxes. Inside the uh, Lynx distributors, you've got the fuses for the inverter, um, solar controllers, and the batteries. And here's your color control screen. It shows you the percentage of the batteries, what's what's coming in off the solar now, but there's a lot more power available because there's nowhere for the power to go at the moment. Um, on this job also, we did a bit of electrical contracting work. There's Martin, one of the electricians for off-grid and solar. We've, uh, you can see we've put some uh, bay lights in up here. Um, so we actually wired the barn out for you too. Um, uh, put a consumer unit in. So we've got uh, various sockets going around the barn. We've got an outdoor socket over there uh, on the other side, so um, you guys can use it for electric streaming, electric lawnmowers, things like that. Um, and we've run another arm and cable out to the other barn, you can see through the trees there. Um, we'll show you a little bit of 
bit about that later on. Uh, another distribution board in there with an outdoor socket and an EV car charger, which should have arrived today. It's gonna to arrive tomorrow now, so we'll show you that tomorrow. But yeah, no, really enjoyed the dog, uh, job. Great place, um, love the site, and all the best to Sheffield Organic Growers. Right, okay, so uh, here we are. I've got a hybrid vehicle, uh, petrol electric hybrid vehicle, um, which is uh, currently charging from our new off-grid solar system. So this is the charging cable normal uh, type 2 charger up there on the wall of the barn that comes across here and just plug it in so because when we're here at work that's when the Sun is uh, shining brightest on the panels so when I just arrive I plug it in and uh, it's always fully charged in a couple of hours we can also uh, have the capacity to plug in electric vans to this type 2 charger and I think the first electric van will be getting in a month or two and I think the solar system will be good enough, powerful enough to run both the van and the car and our cold storage unit. So, yeah, looking forward to the summer.